Episode 2 of The Book of Boba Fett is out, and in my spoiler-free opinion, it's a big step up over the first episode. I know a common complaint with the first episode was that fight choreography was a bit lackluster, and while that didn't bother me as much, I found episode 2 to be a significant upgrade. More importantly for me, the pacing and the character interactions seem to have found more of their footing. We're still splitting time between the past and present, but this is divided into the first and second halves of the episode rather than being interspersed with each other, which, along with the longer runtime, made it easier for me to get into each story. I'm going to get into more spoilery stuff now, so if you haven't seen the episode yet, feel free to drop. To continue with that last thought, I was a bit worried about the ability of the past sections to keep my interest after the first episode. Having only Boba communicating verbally and having most of the Tuscans originally being in the form of guards or enemies made those scenes feel like they dragged on a bit. But here, as we see Boba ingratiate himself too, and even start to train the Tuscans before being accepted as one of their own, the Tuscans are able to help carry the weight a lot more. In the present day parts, we're seeing Boba struggle to find his footing as he collects the broken pieces of Jabba's empire, with an impending conflict between himself and other huts, which is an area I think the episode structure helps with the progression of the show as well. The Tuscan scenes reinforce that while we did just see Boba struggling at first with these new and unfamiliar circumstances, he is capable of adapting and bringing his own existing skill set to bear on the problem like he does with the Tuscans. That for me is a lot more interesting than if Boba came in guns blazing and easily solved these problems despite having no real experience as a leader or in the management elements of his new job. With the Tuscans, we see him take those existing skill sets and apply them to the new kinds of things that he's going to need to learn how to do when dealing with Mos Espa in the huts. While there are some elements of this that are similar to the structure of the first Mandalorian Season 2 episode, where Din Djarin is befriending the Tuscans for the crate hunt, I think there's enough differences in those character motivations to help it stand apart, and it's nice to continue to get a deeper understanding of the Tuscans, which also deepens the impact of Anakin's actions in Episode 2, a movie which this series clearly has a lot of reasons to call back to, and does on many occasions. Finally, much like in The Mandalorian's The Marshall episode where we meet Cobb Vanth, we saw the live-action introduction of another pre-existing character in this episode, Black Chrysanthemum, a Wookiee bounty hunter from the Darth Vader and Doctor Aphra comics, who in the show is working for Jabba's twin cousins and will seemingly be a nemesis for Boba in the coming episodes. Overall, this episode has really grabbed me in a way that the first didn't, though I did still enjoy that one as well. It has me looking forward to the rest of the series a lot more than I was. We'll be talking about Fallen Star, the final of the Phase 1 High Republic books on tomorrow's Tapcalf Transmissions podcast, but next week we'll be talking about both Episodes 2 and 3 of Book of Boba Fett with Eckhart's Ladder, so make sure to check that out as well. For now, let me know what you thought about the episode in the comments, thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time.